So here we're looking at how we can explain the photoelectric effect. And this is uh, something called, it's nicknamed Einstein's model. And again, that's because uh, Einstein was the person who uh, explained what the photoelectric effect does or how it is that it can be this way. So uh, there's four main points to Einstein's model. I've uh, sort of just typed them out right here just to make them a little bit easier to look at. But if you look at this, the very first one, electrons at the surface need a minimum energy in order to escape the metal. This is a way of uh, actually explaining what happens. Uh, let me explain here a little bit better. So if we look at this right here, let's see, I want a pen. So if we're trying to talk about a minimum energy, we actually uh, call this a work function. Now the work function is given a special symbol and it's given this Greek symbol phi here, like this. And if we look at what units we use for it, uh, we can measure the work function either in joules or we can measure it in electron volts. Now we were talking about that before, that electron volts are another way of uh, defining energy, or at least the units of energy. And remember um, that if we want to explain what an electron volt is, we can always just look at our trusty equation sheet. Uh, let's see here, I need something from uh, electricity. We can see here that an, electric, uh, an electron that's been accelerated across a voltage V, or a potential difference V, with a charge E, is going to be given this amount of kinetic energy. So you see again that V times E is a unit of energy. I've uh, mentioned that a few times, hopefully you can see that it's really important. And uh, just to remember that um, one EV, just in case you forgot again, that one EV equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So just in case you ever want to convert those, uh, that's really important. So the second one, light arrives in packets of quantized energy. Now these, of course, these packets, these are photons. And remember, that's why we call this quantum mechanics, because light comes in quantized energies. Now here I'm going to be showing you, again from your equation sheet, um, I think I need the right page, here we go. So from quantum physics and nuclear physics, topic 13, we have E equals HF. So I'm going to be walking you through uh, what this right here does. So that's E equals HF, I'm going to write right here. So E equals HF. Now let's first of all talk about again, uh, E is going to be measured in either joules or electron volts. Okay, so E equals the energy. Let's just write all these down here. So that's again in joules or electron volts. We have uh, F, which is the frequency of light. And if you remember what frequency is measured in, it's measured in either, uh, well, we have a special unit called Hertz, or sometimes we also write it as seconds to the minus one. They're the same. Now that's supposed to be to the minus one here. So again, that's just me uh, not writing it right. Here we go. Good. Now what's H? H is a constant. You don't have to memorize it. Okay, H is just a number. But let's look again on our equation sheet. I'm trying to teach you to always look at your own equation sheet. That's the only thing you're allowed on your exam after all. So if I'm looking at this right here, I think it's on the second page. This is the very first page, although it doesn't say your friend, but uh, this is what you'll be getting. And the next page right here has letter H. And H is Planck's constant. And it's just this number here. Okay, so I'll write that down. So that right there is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 and it's measured in joule seconds. Let's go and make sure this is clear. Four joule seconds. So that's actually a really important equation. This is the first equation from your equation sheet, in fact, uh, for this topic. Now the next one. If the incoming photon energy is large enough, the electrons can overcome the work function and escape the metal. We talked about this before. If we looked at a graph of uh, what this right here actually looks like, uh, I think I have a slide here where we're showing this. Yeah. So from the past here, um, if this is a few slides back, we can see that this energy, and this here is the frequency, that once the frequency is big enough, then the you know energy of the um, ejected electrons will be larger. So what I'm trying to show you here is that if we look at this right here, if the photon energy is large enough, the electrons can overcome the work function and escape the metal. So again, we have this energy here. That's the energy of, um, well, we can say in this case right here, that will be the energy of the electrons that are escaping. 
So you see that if, if uh, initially, of course, they will have no energy, that's because uh, initially they can't actually escape. But at some certain magical frequency, that again, we call the threshold frequency, then um, this energy right here will be given to the electrons. Now this energy given to the electrons, um, of course, ec any extra energies, any e energy above this specific energy here, um, the extra actually goes to the electrons as kinetic energy. So these two right here, this third one and this fourth sort of statement really go well to explain this graph right here. Okay, so again, once it's got enough energy, then they can actually escape. And that's because they have enough to leave the surface. Remember, you have to give this amount, this work function phi, you need that much energy in order to leave the surface for electrons to leave. So if the light gives it enough energy, then they can actually leave. That's this third statement. And the fourth statement says any extra energy is given as kinetic energy to the electrons. So that's why this energy here of the electrons, you see as you go even more frequency, then you get even more kinetic energy. And there's a nice equation that explains this one as well. But back to the equation sheet. Uh, I need the right slide here, let's see. There it is. So that's the second equation, hf equals phi plus e max. There we go. I'll write that down. So this is the next equation, hf equals phi plus e max. And remember what everything is. So this is another really important equation here. That one's very important. And if we look at this then, so hf, let's actually just look at what this is. So hf is actually the energy of the photons. So you see that, that this E equals hf of the photons, that was the energy of the light coming in. That's the photon energy. So we'll define it like this. So hf equals the photon energy. Then we have that the photon energy will be given in two different ways. The first way is the Remember what this is. This phi is called the work function. Okay, so this is the work function. Maybe I'll uh, make it a little bit longer here so we can see it. Work function. And this right here, of course, the E max, that's what we actually call the kinetic energy of the electron. Now, if you look carefully at all the different units, this is units of energy, HF. That's units of energy. Work function is unit of energy. And E max, the kinetic energy, is also a unit of energy. So in other words, all of these can be measured in either um, joules or electron volts. So HF together is in joules or electron volts. Work function is in joules or electron volts, as is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons in joules or electron volts.